Let's revisit the bicycle example we looked at a couple of videos ago. And um, this is a function which constructs a bicycle instance. This clearly is meant to be called in a constructor mode using the new keyword because it's using the reference this. And then here is an execution of that function in the constructor mode by using the new keyword. And now we have a new bicycle instance with the cadence, speed, and the gear being these values. What I'm also going to do is add another property called tire pressure. And uh, I'm going to populate the this reference with the value that gets passed in, which is the tire pressure. So I can pass in a tire pressure over here, and uh, that gets assigned to this property of the object. Now, if I were to reload and run, I'm going to get a bicycle instance which contains those properties. Now, what I want to do is add a method on this bicycle instance, which lets you increase the tire pressure. So I'm going to call this method inflate tires, and I'm going to have this be a reference of this because I want to be able to say bicycle one tired inflate tires, right? And when I call this, I want the tire uh, pressure to increase by, let's say, three, okay? And uh, the way to do this, the way to make this work, is to have a property on the object called inflate tires and have that be a function. So I am going to create that property over here. So I'm going to say inflate tires is a function which basically takes this tire pressure value of this object and increase it. Now, how do I get hold of the instance of this bicycle object on which I'm calling the inflate tires? So you remember when this kind of an execution happens, when I'm calling a function on an object, we are basically looking at method two, right? A function is being executed in an object's context. And now when the function is called like this, you know that the, this reference in this function is going to point to bicycle one which is really handy because that's the object whose tire pressure we want to inflate. So that's perfect. Now all I have to do is this dot tire pressure plus equals three. And now I have increased the tire pressure of that particular object by three. And now if I were to execute this, reload and run, and if I access bicycle one again, you notice that the tire pressure has increased to 28. And of course, there is property called inflate tires, which happens to be a function, but we're just fine. We have what we need. We were able to inflate the tires for this particular bicycle. And this works for multiple objects as well. If I have another object here, which is bicycle two, and this has the tire pressure of uh, 30. And if I were to say bicycle two, dot inflate tires, then you can see that it is going to inflate the tire for bicycle two alone because the this in this case when it's calling this function that this refers to bicycle two so when it when you say tire pressure plus equals three that particular tire pressure gets inflated i'm going to reload and run and if i access bicycle two the tire pressure is 33 which is starting with 30 and one method called to inflate tires which increases the tire pressure by three so this is a handy way in which we can use the con concept of the this reference pointing to the object itself. When you're adding methods to an object and have it access its own properties, this is very handy. But now let's say I wanna get this functionality out. So this inflate tires is a handy function. Uh, let's say this is a super complicated function that somebody else has written. And I don't want this to be a part of the bicycle alone. Right? So let's say I have uh, an object which is a bicycle mechanic and I want the bicycle mechanic to also be able to inflate tires for any bicycle that's handed to him or her. So I want to basically take this inflate tires function, take it outside the context of the bicycle and have it be a part of another object. So when I do that, things get a little bit tricky. So let me explain why in the next video. Before we move on, there's an important distinction that I want to point out. Each function could have a different this reference, even though there is one function inside another function. So if you look at the code here, there's one top level function, which is what the constructor is, right? It's being called in the constructor mode. And then there is an inner function, which is not being called in constructor mode. So since there are two functions, it's possible 
for the this reference of those two functions to be different, and they actually are. The this reference of the constructor function is the new object that gets created when the function is called in constructor mode. Whereas the this reference of the inflate tires function is what the object is on whose property the inflate tires is being caught. All right. So I just want you to understand that there are two different functions here which are being called in different ways. One is being called as a constructor function, another is being called as a property of an object. So it makes sense that the this reference for these two functions are different, even though one of them is inside another. So the this reference in the outer function is different from the this reference in the inflate tires function. It's very important for you to remember that every function could have a different this reference. Just because there is one function inside another doesn't mean that the this reference is the same. So hopefully that made sense. See you in the next video.